much for having me. My name is Eli King. I am the executive assistant here at Miramont Castle Museum. And we're going to begin our virtual tour this evening with an overview of the castle's rich history. And then we'll be going through room by room details as we continue the tour. And here is the castle. So the construction of Miramont Castle began in 1895 and the East Wing was added in 1897. The castle was built as a personal residence for Father Jean-Baptiste Francolon and his mother, Madame Francolon. Father Francolon came originally from France to New Mexico as the personal secretary to Bishop Lamy of the New Mexican Archdiocese. Due to ill health, he relocated to Manitou as the parish priest for Our Lady of Perpetual Help in 1892. However, in the early 1900s, the Francolons returned to France, never to revisit Colorado. In 1904, the Sisters of Mercy purchased the empty Montcalm Castle next to Miramont to use as a sanitarium, primarily for treating tuberculosis. Three years later, Montcalm was tragically destroyed by fire. The sisters primarily treated tuberculosis there, moving the Montcalm Sanitarium into Miramont to continue their work. They ran the sanitarium until 1927 when the castle transitioned into a retreat for the, and vacation home for the Sisters of Mercy. In 1946, the sisters sold the building to private investors who subdivided the castle into nine apartments for returning soldiers from World War II at which time the building was renamed Castle Apartments. During the ensuing years, the castle fell into disrepair and suffered a great deal of damage. The castle changed hands 11 times over that 30 year apartment era. Miramont has four floors, which are stepped up along the mountainside, allowing for each floor to open on the ground level. The castle has 30 rooms covering 14,000 square feet, most of which are open to the public. The building features nine different styles of architecture designed by Father Francolon himself. When constructed, the castle included indoor plumbing, steam heat, and electricity, all luxuries of the time. Throughout your tour, take note of unusually shaped rooms, a design which typified the Victorian era. The Manitou Springs Historical Society purchased the building in 1976 and saved it from condemnation. The castle and its staff do business on behalf of the Manitou Springs Historical Society. Thousands of hours of volunteer labor have gone into the restoration of the castle and thousands more are needed. Miramont Castle's mission is to preserve this historical building and to provide educational experiences and resources on the history of Manitou Springs, its indigenous people and artifacts. And we're just gonna walk up these stairs here and we're walking into what is called a portica share, which is a covered driveway. Originally, this space was used for carriages. And as we continue on, this first room was called the carriageway entrance, appropriately named for that. This is our front desk area here where you check in for tours. And our tour will begin under the stairs with our firefighters museum which was donated in 2010 by the Manitou Springs Fire Department. This was originally the castle's basement, which had no heat and housed the furnace and coal rooms. And here we're presented with some authentic firefighter memorabilia. All of these artifacts typically range between the 1800s to present day, showing the fire department's progression. This firefighters museum is also Manitou Springs only firefighters museum. So we are lucky to have these artifacts. 
Along that back wall there, you can also see a log that typically was used for punching in doors. We've had a close relationship with the Manatee Springs Fire Department for many years as well. They always volunteer for our Christmas event, our Christmas charity event as well. And I want you to take special note of this original Manitou Springs hose cart and the photo behind it of the young firefighters pulling along that hose cart by hand. It is a really fantastic piece. We also have that small area for children to try on some firefighter museum uh, clothing. You can also see the very, very thick walls as we continue through. And we are just circling back to the front desk area here. Right, and back through the carriageway entrance, we are just ascending these stairs here. This was the staircase from the original entrance prior to the construction of the East Wing. And we're just going to take one glance back at this room. And entering the hall here, um, this was a welcome room for visitors in the 1890s. And to the left, you can see our parlor. You can also see the music alcove to the left connected by that Moorish arch. And in this room, just past the parlor, we'll be taking a look at our Queen's Parlor Tea Room. So this room was originally a conservatory and veranda, and it has since been remodeled with a beautiful tin ceiling and crown molding. And under non-COVID circumstances, the tea room is open to the public, serving unique multi-course tea packages and lunch. Returning to the parlor here, I just want you to note that 20 ton red sandstone fireplace. Um, this has original shingles um, with inlaid, or excuse me, um, this has the original shingles, which are dyed African or made of African mahogany and the pillars are stained to match. And this stone is carved out of the mountainside and the building it's anchored to. And turning east here, we're just headed through these double doors into the dining room. So this dining room here has a curved south wall and an eight foot tall etagere with those beautiful beveled mirrors and inlaid wood depicting cherubs and flora, one of my favorite pieces in the castle.
And this next room here is the serving kitchen. The wood wainscoting or paneling that you see on the walls was only used in kitchens and bathrooms. From this kitchen, Madame Francolin's French servants served meals prepared by the Sisters of Mercy. And continuing forward here, next to the grand staircase in front of us, we're just gonna turn to the right to see this small landing connecting to the Firefighters Museum. And next we'll enter a small room that was originally a bathroom. And there is this tiny locked closet on the left wall showing the only original wallpaper remaining in the castle. There's a blue fleur-de-lis design which was set with an arsenic compound called Paris Green to keep the color from running and is highly poisonous. But don't worry, that's why there's a lock on it. And turning around, we're just gonna take a look at this stained glass piece here. And particularly to note the tiny Miramont castle that is actually carved out of the glass there. And moving into the next room is the eight-sided chapel. In Father Franklin's time at the castle, this room was his dining room. The sisters converted it into a chapel. Please note that restored antique fireplace, which was donated from another historic home in Manitou. And that room off to the right is Father Francolin's smoking room. This exhibit is set up as a replica. Note that antique suit of armor and small library. And retreating through the chapel and exiting the north doors, this exhibit portrays the photos and memorabilia of the Nuremberg trials. These were a series of military tribunals held after World War II by Allied forces. Just past the exhibit, you will view Judge Young's office. Through his office, you can see his sitting room. And Judge Young was an attending in Colorado Springs, Colorado. He worked his way up through the court system where he was elected as Supreme Court Justice to the Colorado State Supreme Court. From there, he was handpicked to preside over the 12th and final Nuremberg trial on the high command trial using this office space in Miramont Castle. So returning to this landing in front of the grand staircase, we have numerous photographs, including photos of Jean Baptiste Francolin, Father Francolin, and the Sisters of Mercy. You can also see that old picture of the parlor there with that fireplace. There's also these photos of the Sisters of Mercy standing outside of Miramont during its time as Montcalm Sanitarium. And ascending the grand staircase, we can enjoy the three 16 inch windows, which are English Tudor and the two arched windows to the right are Gothic. The landing is one of two locations with oak floors in the castle with a great view of the mountainside as well. And along the wall there as well are just several historic photos of Manitou Springs. And at the top of the stairway, we will begin the third floor tour off to our right. We'll begin with the solarium. This seven-sided glass solarium has a roof with an 18-inch crown. 
big enough to fit our 12 foot tall Christmas tree. The solarium originally had a glass ceiling which allowed for the room to be a conservatory during the Father Francolon era and as a surgery room for the Sisters of Mercy with their tuberculosis work. This small room to the east of the solarium is our newest exhibit, Spoils of War. American, German, and Japanese memorabilia are presented in honor of the patriotic men and women who served this country. This room is made to honor the span of time when Miramont Castle was used as housing for GIs returning from World War II. And we're just getting a quick look at the guest suite from another angle. Right, this guest suite actually has 16 sides and was part of a suite consisting of a bedroom, a bathroom, two closets, and the room which is now used to house spoils of war. It was quite spacious to make even the most dignified guests comfortable. And along this north wall is the servant's stairway. This steep, narrow staircase leads from the first floor to the former servants' quarters on the fourth floor. The servants were required to traverse all floor floors without being seen or heard. And the tour, the tour will continue down the hall next to the Great Hall. This first room here is the sitting porch, which was originally a covered veranda that was enclosed during the East Wing addition. Lots of mountainous views. And this next room here is a replica of a Victorian bathroom. Originally, this room was divided and had a closet in the rear. Proceeding through, this is mother's dressing room. This room was designed to be her bedroom, but was too small to accommodate her 13 foot tall four poster bed she brought from France. The final room of Mother's Suite is her bedroom. This French blue hexagonal room was built to be Father's library and is the only room with an oak trim. This room is believed to be renovated to its original blue colors. Remember that 13 foot tall bed? We actually have a small photo there of what that four poster bed looked like. And here is also a photo of Madame Francolon herself and her imported bed. And just behind those photos, the fireplace on the north wall has been reported by the Sisters of Mercy to have a secret compartment, but due to the delicate condition of the tile, it has not been located. I can only imagine what secrets could be hiding. And looking west, we will enter the Great Hall, which was originally Father Francolon's picture gallery. Housed here were his extensive and valuable art collections and tapestries. Currently hung here is the collection of Charles Rocky, a local Manitou artist. It is a more modern time period than the castle's history, but it is a significant part of the Manitou Springs history and art scene. Charles Rocky's art style is very imaginative, colorful, and dramatic. He was known for his fantasy and Manitou landscape paintings. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2019. We are fortunate enough to house his only collection currently available for viewing. And as we enter the west end of the Great Hall, Note the five Moorish keyhole windows cut of red sandstone. They have undergone extensive restoration, one of the first efforts made by the Historical Society after replacing the roof. This area was originally the location of Father Francolon's vast Native American artifact collection, 
we have honored that original intent with the small display against the wall. And continuing west through the doorway next to the stairs is Father Francolon's sleeping apartment. The large stone archway on the south wall to the left leads to Father Francolon's bedroom. This room is one of two in the castle with original oak flooring. His private quarters were built quite modestly in comparison to Madame Francolon's room to align with his priestly beliefs and vow of poverty. Note the beautiful diamond paned windows that go along the wall there. And this room here is our local history exhibit displaying artifacts from the local Midland Railroad, Manitou memorabilia, and local Native Americans. This flooring had suffered extensive water damage in the 1972 fire and has since been replaced. Memorabilia from the Pikes Peak Hill Climb is also on display, which is a tradition spanning years of timed races up Pikes Peak Mountain in motor vehicles. And we are headed up the stairs here to our gift shop reminiscent of an 1890s mercantile. This first room here was known as the tower room and used as a press room during Father Francolon's two fundraising balls in 1897. Heat and water from the fire caused the 1972 plaster to, and cement to fall off of the walls, which exposed the rock walls of the castle, showing its original construction. This hallway leading east through the gift shop is the original location of the servants' quarters during the Francolon era. The angled ceilings and tight hallways are a perfect example of the unusual Victorian era style. During this time, servants' quarters were not considered living space and therefore were not taxed. And we're just going to take a right onto the small landing here. Please note this vintage shoe in the wall. Stemming from Old English tradition, this shoe was placed into the fabric of Miramont Castle during its original construction. It was thought to bring good luck and ward off evil spirits. It was never meant to be found and was discovered on accident during routine building repairs. It was returned to its rightful place inside the wall to be displayed. And to the left, note the beautiful antique doll display housed in a former closet. And this next room displays vintage tools like the ones used to build the castle. The castle was built by local woodwork contractors, Angus and Archie Gillis, and local stonemason, William Frizzell. It is baffling to think of these workers creating a building this size without modern construction tools. And this room is staged with antique toys and artifacts, most of which predate the 1900s. And circling back here, we're going to take a look at the stone wall with a large anchor protruding. This is one visible anchor out of eight total holding Miramont Castle to the mountainside. So we have those to thank for keeping the castle from slipping down the mountain. And we'll just take a quick, quick look at the Christmas room and head back down this hallway out to the exit. And if you're a tea drinker, we also have our selection of loose leaf tea from our Queen's Parlor Tea Room available. If you would like to learn even more about the castle and its journey through time, Memoirs of Miramont Castle is available in our gift shop. This book was co-written by our director of 26 years and includes an incredible amount of detail. 
this would be a fantastic gift as well for all of you Christmas, uh, for all of you history buffs and readers for Christmas. And continuing outside, we'll take a brief look at our castle gardens. It may be winter, but come springtime, the gardens will be exploding with greenery and flowers. And turning around here, please take a look at the top of this wall. We often get the question of what makes this a castle? And the answer is the crenellated parapet, which we have an example of here. This pattern of crenellation along a fortified wall or parapet is what makes Miramont Castle a castle. This is a European style of battle architecture from medieval times. There, now you can say you know what a crenellated parapet is and that's good for dinner parties. And continuing along our path, there is a lot more to our upper parking lot than meets the eye. So if you look closely at these stone walls enclosing us, you can see the notches where walls and even the outline of where a window used to be. This, is, this was the lot of the foundations for the original Montcalm Sanitarium before the fire burnt it to the ground. And right on the left there across from this lot, you can see a small tuberculosis hut. This small hut was designed to let in the crisp, dry Manitou air, which was thought to be essential to healing tuberculosis patients. This means that patients got plenty of air even during the winter months. The Sisters of Mercy did great work and were very much known for helping with tuberculosis. All right, and that concludes our tour. Thank you so much for having me and I hope you have a great rest of your evening.